Hey YouTubers, so today I'm going to show you how I'm locating and uh, cutting some holes in this bed frame. Since it's so hard, I don't want to have to drill every hole. I'm going to sort of show you what I'm doing. So these are the two pieces that are being put together to plate. So I've got several holes I've got to drill here. This one, this one, and then these three on both sides. You see the holes there as well. So it's a couple things I'm doing. First off, I'm going to mark the uh, location. I'm going to get this pressed in just using my vise and beating on it a little bit because it's gotten a little bit twisted. All right, you can see not much of the holes are exposed, so it's pretty parallel. A little bit more here, but it's close enough for this. So what I'm going to do is just take my square, line it up to the edge. All right, so I put a line there. All right, so I've got all my scratches in there. All right, now I'm going to flip around to the other side because I don't want it to move left or right while I'm doing this. So essentially, I'm just going to try to scratch this all around. Uh, I've got one more hole that'll come later, but I can't do that until I crush this all the way together. I don't want to deal with that right now. So we'll go ahead and take this apart now. Success. guys we're back to the trailer I am trying to start fitting things together I've decided I'm just gonna weld it but I found out I got too much weld in this area I've got to grind some out so that's what I'm gonna do right now all right so I've got the trailer parts laid out they're upside down and I'm trying to get them all square because they uh, rock a little bit it's proven to be a little difficult like for example this piece it wants to rock side to side and I need it there to be partly square and then I also need to square this so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and tack these all right so we're gonna try this one now I think I've got it square it is square to the floor this way and it's square that way. Okay, so this is all welded, all four corners, and I've decided I'm going to at least hit the edges on both of these and then I'm going to try to do the same here I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it just on both sides but only on this one I'm only going to do that on this one because it's got the load on it for pulling um, all right so I found this burr we'll see how it does yeah that should be good I'm not going to do the center one because I can't line it up very well. The holes are on the other side, I believe. See all the lines look pretty parallel now. A little bit of offset right there, but it follows all the way down. Well, what do you think of that? I could weld these insides, but I don't think it's necessary. Not for the center one. And this outer one is welded all around. I don't think it's necessary either. 
all right so i have the two sitting on top just to verify everything's good and it keeps it flat so it won't get a, a twist in it well in kind of a rush it is sunday midway through the day already and i've got two things i want to try to get done uh or by the end of the day tuesday number one is number one is this bike it's got a lot left to be done i don't know if i'm going to be able to get it done number two the trailer this i need to get done and it's not got a ton left to do I don't have my screen mesh to go on top of it, so I'm going to have to use the wood that, that originally came on it, which I would rather not use, but that's fine if I have to. Anyway, so what's left on the trailer? Welding those arms, and then I can put it together, because this part's already welded. Alright, so this is going to alternate from wire wheeling and welding wire wheeling and welding i can't do a long weld anyway unless i want to warp the this thing i've turned this up to 130 we'll see how that works hopefully it's good otherwise i mean i can turn it up more So both of these are welded together. I only had one weld that popped and I ground that down and welded it back. It seems like this was a pretty decent heat. I mean, they're not the best welds ever, but hey, some of them are pretty good. I'm sure that'll hold. All right, back on work on the trailer. I have got the corners all painted up where I was welding and now I am putting these hinge pieces on. Two bolts, two of the short bolts go through, two short bolts hold the two pieces together uh, like so and then the other two bolts go on the other piece which is over there that's what I'm doing now I'm having to clean up the bolts instead of trying to deal with sandblaster and all that I am just grabbing several bolts and several nuts I've already done it to to those I needed four more though I also painted the um, these are the the trailer uh, arms they go to the hitch i have painted those as well front and back so they're ready to go all right so i got some longer bolts they are part of the other part of the trailer for other areas um, i'm just going to use these on here to try to finish getting this together so they want us to go ahead and tack these together thing down this side that holds the a arms up or the the tongue arms up so now we put on all of the parts for the shocks and axle and such so i believe this goes like this because it's pretty much the only way it can go and i know that this is where the shock mount goes so it's got a angle iron and that can only really fit like that and this gives us two bolts here and one bolt there I do remember that it stands up with the tongue side which the, the front side of the trailer up because the tongue flips down at this hinge point so the wheels go down here and that I know is the bracket mount for the wheels so that's how it goes and of course the opposite one All right, so I'm back with my bolts and things from the hardware store and I uh, bought bolt long enough to do this. I knew I was gonna need this bolt anyway. When I built this originally, I didn't think about that, but I did consider it later on. So I've got pieces partly ready to make this. Basically, I'm just gonna make a little triangle, a couple triangle pieces and then put a plate on it and put the hole in it so that a washer will sit on top of that and be able to uh, clamp against it. I'll show you what I mean. So here I have this little piece of metal and then this little piece of metal. This is the piece that's going to 
basically rest where the uh, bolt's at. This will be about center. I'm just going to tack this in place. I've got the wire speed set way down so hopefully I don't melt it all. Okay, so that's basically it. I'll have to grind this down where that weld went awry. Alright, so here's what I've got. These couple of pieces made. I think I'm going to have to uh, shorten this a little bit, but that's the idea there. The idea is for this to fit like this, and first off it's not exactly flat. This needs to be ground down some, but also I want to get it so it's pretty much smooth through here. We'll try to even that up, see what it does. Let's look at the other one. Yeah, that one stands too tall, both sides. It's also a little uneven, but it's way too tall. So we're going to grind this one down quite a bit. Alright, so here's what I've got. This sits in here like this. This will go there. And the washer's not going to get folded up due to getting torqued. A little bit of tighten this good. We can uh, go ahead and weld this right there. So I'm going to get my marker and put a couple marks. Uh, take the paint off of that spot. And we'll be good to go soon. All right, we got the new bolts in there, new bolts in there, the new longer bolts for this. I also went ahead and welded capped this off, made this flat. Both sides are done. So now that it's tight on both sides, I'm going to put a mark so that we can put this on the drill press and put a hole through it so we can put a cotter pin in it. And just in case things rub off, it is one, two, third thread in. We'll take them back off. Put them on the drill press. The cutter pins I got are 0.09 inches. So I'm going to use this 0.109 drill bit. Should give me plenty of play to easily get this in and out. like it may have messed our threads up a little bit right there so we're going to take a file and try to fix that yeah it'll spin past as long as it can spin past and i can get my cotter pin through that should be good so i was trying to determine whether the spring went this way or flipped around and this is the way it goes you can see in the manual here that we've got the uh where it holds the wheels which is right here that's on the back and you can see that the curved end is nearer that so that's how i've got it so we just got to put a couple of bolts in to hold that in place that part will be done it'll be ready to put the axle on it the, i'll go ahead and put these wheels all together put the spender piece together we're getting close to it being ready to use and take to iron mountain to haul our dirt bikes all right guys more to come thanks for watching